Let's start. Good morning. I'm Luca. I'm from uh, Italy. I work for a Drupal shops, uh, Drupal shop in Milan, Italy. Here are some of my account page on Drupal.org and Twitter. And I'm a maintainer of a couple of Drupal 8 uh, modules, um, Web Profiler and XH Proof, and some other modules for Drupal 7. And I'm in the organization of the Italian Drupal Day this winter, and next year, uh, the Drupal Dev Days in, uh, in Italy. And uh, in this session, uh, we will see how Drupal, uh, Drupal 8 builds uh, the web pages. And you, you may already know that uh, all, all Drupal 8 pages are built in the, in the same way. Okay, if you have a node page or an admin page, a view page, a user profile page, uh, all of those uh, follows the, the same life cycle. Okay, a request uh, is received and Drupal return a, a response. So in this session we go through all the layers that the HTTP request uh, passes through uh, and uh, how it builds the HTML response at the, at the end of the, of the journey. Okay, to, to get the most out of this journey, I suggest you disable for, <clears throat> for understand how Drupal, uh, how Drupal work, works. Uh, I suggest you uh, disable the default caches and uh, optimization made by Drupal 8 by default. In, in Drupal 8, uh, all the performance optimization are turned on by, by default, so you have to disable. Mm, and you can do this, uh, th that in a, in, a simple, uh, in a simple way. You have to decomment a couple of lines in settings.php file that import the settings.local.php file that disable a lot of caches, uh, uh, JavaScript and uh, CSS uh, aggregation and, and so on. But to, to analyze uh, how Drupal, Drupal 8 in this case works, uh, it's better if you, if you can use a tool uh, that gives us an in-depth insight uh, into how the different subsystems work and interact. Uh, so uh, exists a module for, for Drupal 8, it's called Web Profiler, I'm the maintainer. Uh, that is based on the, on the Symfony profiler. If you ever use the Symfony full stack application, uh, at the bottom of every HTML pages, uh, you have a toolbar with a lot of widgets uh, that show you uh, a lot of information uh, about the, every, every page. Uh, and Web Profiler is useful, for, uh, is, is useful to analyze the performance of, uh, of a resp uh, response. So you can analyze the number of queries, uh, time, memory, and a lot of other information. But it's also useful to analyze how the system works under the hood. In this session, we, we will use the 2.0 beta 15 version of Web Profiler, which is compatible with the Drupal core beta, beta 15. Okay. And when you enable Web Profiler on your website, it starts to collect and save a lot of useful information about uh, every generated page, both uh, the get or post uh, uh, request to your website. And Profiles goes to the database by default, uh, but it can also store to the, to the file system. You, have to, you, you can choose where to store the, uh, the profile. And uh, like in, in Symfony, a preview of those um, collected data is printed uh, in a toolbar at the bottom of every HTML page. And on this toolbar, uh, there are uh, a number of uh, widgets, depending on uh, uh, the number of data collectors you have enabled uh, on, your, on your system. And when you click on those widgets on the, on the toolbar, 
you go to, to the dashboard. Dashboard is a um, backbone powered application, so it's very responsive. Uh, and in the dashboard, you have access to all the collected information. Uh, Okay, Web Profiler is a module like uh, every other Drupal module, so you, you can install it, uh, install it uh, uh, with the method you, you prefer. It, uh, it has only a couple of JavaScript dependencies that are not uh, uh, mandatory, but they are useful for showing more, more information. Uh, D3.js for the timeline, we, we saw the timeline uh, we will see the timeline uh, in a couple of minutes. And the highlight JS to highlight the, the syntax of the JavaScript, the database queries. So uh, we can use the Drupal console module for, for example, Drupal console project, for example, for enable uh, web profiler on our website. Okay. And if we reload the uh, our page, we have this toolbar at the bottom uh, of every, every pages of our website. Okay, in, in this session, uh, we will see uh, only a subset of the all uh, available widgets. Uh, so we mm, disable, we, we turn off uh, the one we, we doesn't use. Uh, Configuration of Web Profiler are available both from the configuration menu of the Drupalator or directly from the toolbar on the first, uh, on the first widget on, on the left. You can click on Configure Web Profiler to go to the configuration page. Okay. Here we have uh, a lot of settings. Uh, you can choose to <coughs> delete of the profiles when you clear the cache. You can choose the just the um, storage backend. Uh, now we have uh, file storage and database uh, storage. There is a patch on, on the issue queue to enable the Elasticsearch uh, storage backend. Uh, we can exclude some path from profiling. And then we have a list of all available uh, uh, data collectors and we can uh, Mm, turn on only uh, the one we we will see in this presentation. So we leave uh, on assets, blocks, cache, uh, database, events, extensions, forms, requests, routing services, theme, and timeline. Then you can. Uh, uh, configure an uh, ID link to, to open a uh, uh, file in your, directly in your editor. We will see how this works. And then you have some configuration for the database uh, widget. You can choose to display the queries by source or by duration or highlight the, the slow query. queries. Okay, save configuration. Okay, so let's start. Okay, the, um, the first chapter of this journey through the, the, the request of a, an HTTP request through, through Drupal uh, uh, starts with uh, a, a single file, index.php, uh, which is the front controller of Drupal. Uh, uh, it's a, a bunch of line of code that uh, every, every single uh, request it's when, uh, when arrives to a Drupal website. Uh, on those files, uh, the first thing we import, use uh, some, a, couple of, uh, a couple of classes, then we require the autoloader uh, from Composer, and then we, we build an instance of the Drupal kernel, which is a, um, the, the Drupal version of the HTTP kernel of Symfony uh, that handle the request and turn it to a, turns it to a response. Then we build a request object, a Symfony request object, 
from global super arrays uh, in PHP like get, uh, server, cookie, files, and so on. And then the kernel handles the, the request and turn it into a, a response. Okay, the response uh, will be sent to the browser and the, the process uh, uh, will terminate. The, the, in, the interesting part of this, uh, uh, of, of this file is the handle method of the kernel uh, class. Uh, and in the next few chapters, we, we will see uh, how this, uh, this method uh, coordinate of the different subsystems to build the, the, the response. But before entering the kernel, the request passes through a, a set of layers uh, called uh, middleware, and those uh, layers can decorate or alter the request before he uh, reaches the, um, the kernel, it reaches the kernel, and the number of layers and the order of those layers depend, it depends on, the, on what modules you have uh, enabled on your, on your website. So the request arrives uh, uh, to your website, cross all the layers, then reach the kernel. The kernel turns the, response, uh, the request in a response. The response recross uh, all the layers uh, in, in, the, in, the same, uh, in the same order, and then it is returned to the, to the browser. <clears throat> okay, every layer of the, this uh, stack middleware has a priority, and the request passes through uh, each of them in, in, a, in order from the highest priority to the lowest priority. And we can, we can start using Web Profiler here to, to look into this, uh, this stack and see uh, all the layers and their, their priority. The middleware information are in the services widget on the middleware tab, so we can go to the home page. This is a Drupal 8 uh, Beta 15 uh, uh, website. can click on the services uh, widget on the, on the toolbar, the one with the puzzle. And here we saw a list of uh, all the middleware that are configured in this, uh, in this website from the highest priority to the lowest priority. So the first, uh, lay the first uh, layer um, that the request hits is the uh, negotiation which the, um, decide if the request uh, was an HTML request, an AJAX request, uh, uh, and so on. Then we have uh, the web profiler middleware that uh, starts the query logger. Uh, then we have the reverse proxy, page cache, uh, kernel prehandler, and the session um, layer. Um, in a, in a lot of uh, part of the web profiler dashboard, uh, when we have a, a, a class or a method, we can click directly on the, on the link, and if you have configured your editor uh, correctly, it's open uh, on, the, on the exact method of the, of the class. So for, for instance, this is the web profiler uh, middleware. And uh, here we only start the, the database uh, query logger. And the same for, for the others. Okay. The next uh, thing that uh, our request uh, hits after crossing all the uh, stack middleware layers is the routing process. During the, the routing process, uh, the request is ready to be, to be routed, and uh, Drupal uh, has to figure out the piece of code that uh, handle, handle it and convert it uh, into something else. 
uh, this project is, is called routing and allows Drupal to understand which controller uh, will handle the, the request, so which uh, controller classes and method uh, will handle the, the request. So we can, we can see an example here. We can use the examples for developers uh, module, which has a sub-module called, called uh, page example that implements a couple of uh, uh, pages. Uh, you can read also from the, the end of the room. Okay. Okay, here we have a, a simple page example uh, and we can, we can see uh, which uh, route controller uh, is used for build this, uh, this specific page. <clears throat> we have uh, a request widget on the toolbar which shows us uh, uh, the status of the HTTP response. In this case, it is a 200 uh, OK response. Uh, we see, we saw um, the route name, every, every route in, uh, in Drupal has a unique identifier. In this case, uh, it was a page underscore example underscore simple. If we click uh, <clears throat> on, the, on the widget, we go to the, to the dashboard or to the request uh, pane. And um, we can see that the, the route uh, was a page uh, example simple. And um, that um, the controller class is a, a page example controller and the method was the, the, the simple method of this, uh, of this class. Uh, so we can, for example, click here to see uh, how the controller, uh, what the controller method uh, does. Okay. Um, Web Profiler has a, another um, widget called Routing, which shows us uh, uh, every route defined on our system. So uh, if you're looking for a specific uh, route, uh, uh, you can... Uh, use this uh, this widget to to understand um, the route uh, ID and the path. And uh, before uh, calling the controller, um, the routing system uses some access control to determine if the user can or cannot uh, access uh, that uh, specific route. And on the request uh, widget, under the access um, check section, uh, we can see that uh, the example, page example simple path uh, needs uh, um, some, some permissions to, uh, the user needs to have uh, a specific permission to access uh, uh, this page. And uh, we can, look uh, at the routing uh, file when, where this uh, information is, uh, is defined. And we, we know that uh, this, uh, this, route, this route is provided by the page underscore example module. To discover where this module <coughs> is installed uh, in, our, in our system, we can go to the extensions widget, look for page underscore example uh, module here and we can click on the info file link to go to the info file of this uh, of this module in the same in the same folder of the info.yaml file of every every module we have uh, a routing uh, yaml file which uh, describes all the route in, in your in this in this module, for example, and uh, we uh, we have here the the definition of the of the page we we just saw uh, the route ID is page underscore example underscore simple, and uh, uh, the the permission the requirements so the the, the access 
is based on a permission, so uh, Drupal uh, uses the access, uh, access check uh, dot permission service to, to determine if the user can or cannot access this, uh, this resource, this, uh, this page. Okay, developers, uh, examples for uh, developers in, the, in this page uh, example module. As uh, another, another example, more complex, more interesting, <coughs> the, on the arguments uh, page link, uh, we, we, can, we can see a, um, a parametric uh, URL. So in, uh, in, the, in this case, uh, the path of this, uh, of this page has some arguments in it. The definition uh, is this, so uh, the page underscore example underscore arguments uh, root uh, has a, as a path uh, example, page example arguments, first and second. And these are the arguments that uh, arrives to the, to the controller uh, method and uh, based on the uh, values uh, you, you have on the, on the URL. Uh, so in this case, the, the route has some arguments in it, first and second, and we can see the values of those arguments in the request widgets of Web Profiler. And then we can, we can see how those, that those uh, arguments arrives to the um, controller method uh, in a couple of arguments uh, which have the same name of the variables on the, on the path definition. So we have uh, a first argument and second argument. Okay, so here, <clears throat> in this case, we have that the first value was 33, second was 56. And if we look at the definition of the controller method, uh, we saw the same uh, arguments, first and second, that the controller used to, uses to build the, 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 con the contents of the page. Because the path was uh, examples, uh, page example, arguments 23, 56. Okay. In some cases, <coughs> uh, the parameters were upcasted before reaching the controller. Uh, for example, when you go to the node slash uh, uh, one, for example, uh, uh, root, the controller does not receive uh, uh, one as parameter, but it receives the node object that corresponds to the end node ID one. Uh, all of this uh, is done automatically for you uh, by the entity system in this case. And in Web Profiler, we can, we can see that if we, this for example is a node page. In this case, it's not the, it's the node 20. If we go to the request widget of this page, we can see that the node arguments that uh, is passed to the controller is a uh, node object and not uh, uh, the one value. Okay. And when the, the page you are, uh, uh, the page you have is a, is a form, usually, uh, for example, the site information page, usually uh, the, the controller used is always the same. Uh, which is a HTML form controller. So if we go to the site information page, for example, okay, the controller that builds uh, this page is HTML form controller in all cases. 
Uh, if we want to discover uh, the effective code that uh, builds this, uh, this form, we can use another widget on the, on the toolbar, the, the form widget, that uh, shows us uh, some information about uh, the, this specific uh, form. <clears throat> so we have the form ID, system site information settings, and the uh, form uh, class, and some information about the elements of the form API that is defined in this, uh, in this form. If we click uh, here, we, we can see that the, this form is built with those uh, form API elements. Okay, so we can discover uh, which part, which code builds uh, the, um, the, the, the specific, uh, specific page. Okay, next step. Uh, often, often controllers uh, uh, need to execute some complex logics to, to build uh, uh, to build uh, to build our page, and it's not a good idea to have all this uh, logic into the controller uh, class, okay? Uh, because uh, uh, it's better that we separate concerns uh, so every class uh, do a specific uh, specific things. Uh, but it's also useful for reusing uh, the same code uh, uh, in different places and for testing uh, the, our, our business logic. <clears throat> so all of that business logic uh, needs to be in very specialized classes, uh, which are the services, okay? So uh, all the logic of our application uh, needs to stay in those, uh, in those uh, classes and those services. <clears throat> Drupal Core provides us uh, with a large number of already defined uh, services. There are about uh, 500 uh, only uh, in the core. And these services ranging from translate a text, uh, run a database query, sends an email, authenticate a user, uh, uh, and so on. And all, the, all of those services are managed by a service container uh, that, uh, which is in charge of uh, creating all the dependencies automatically. Um, and uh, we can see a complete list of all the services in the services uh, widget of Web Profiler. And here, services. Uh, there are a list of every service defined in, in uh, our website. <clears throat> some of them uh, uh, are initialized, some of them not, because uh, not every service is used on every request. Uh, and for, for every service, uh, we have a lot of uh, useful information. For example, the service ID, the class that defines the service, the uh, tags, that are used in this, uh, in this service, and the dependency. For example, uh, cache underscore context underscore uh, dot URL uh, depends uh, on request underscore stack. And then we have uh, some information uh, useful for performance uh, analysis. We have the number of, the, the, the number of times this service uh, is uh, requested from the, from the code, and the time Drupal spends in initializing uh, this service. Then uh, the, all, all services uh, are lazy loaded and then initialized uh, only once time. The, 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 the second request uh, uses this, the, the same uh, instance. So this is the time of the first uh, initialization. For example, if we look uh, at the module handle service, which is the service that man manage all your module. You can use it to enable a module, disable a module, uh, invoke a, new, a nook on a, on a module, <coughs> uh, and so on. It depends uh, on uh, app.root and cache.bootstrap services. So when your code 
ask Drupal for an instance of uh, module underscore handler, <coughs> the service container instantiate uh, app.root and cache.bootstrap for you and inject uh, them directly into the module handle. So all these dependencies are managed automatically and you only have to ask for a specific uh, service and the service container uh, do all the things for, uh, for you. Okay, and during the life cycle of our request, the service, the service container is uh, used to get all the required service. And we can use, uh, for example, uh, the recent uh, log messages page. Uh, okay, uh, this page is built by the overview method of the dblog controller class. And we, saw, we will see in a, in a moment uh, that um, a, con a controller isn't a service uh, normally. Uh, so we can inject uh, services uh, into, uh, into a controller class, okay, because uh, the service container manages only the, the services. So uh, we have to follow a specific pattern in, uh, in Drupal 8, uh, and use a, um, we have to use a, a create method, which receives uh, the service container, and use it to inject our dependencies into the controller constructor. So we can use web profiler to go to, to understand of this works. If we go to the uh, database login is here. Okay. We can use web profiler to look at the controller class. In this class, we have a Static, uh, static method called create that receives the, an instance of the service container and use it to uh, extract for, from this service container all the required services this controller needs to do uh, what, uh, what it do. In this case, uh, he needs the database service, uh, the module handle service, the data uh, formatter service, and the form builder service. And all of those services are used uh, in the overview, overview method, for example, to, to build <coughs> the, this, specific, uh, this specific page. For example, it used the module handle service to load, load and include the file, <coughs> the database service to, to run a query on the, on the database, and, and so on. And we, uh, we have this, uh, this, uh, this page. Uh, we, we have just seen that uh, uh, one of the services used by these uh, uh, recent log messages is the database service. The database service is one of the most used services because uh, it's used to run uh, every, every query to the database. And we can use Web Profiler to, to analyze uh, the queries uh, run uh, to the database. So uh, we can go to the database uh, widget, and we can use it to uh, discover uh, all the queries uh, that uh, uh, are needed to build uh, this, uh, this page. <coughs> for, every, for every query, we have uh, the, um, the version with, uh, with placeholder, time spent uh, in the running this query, the, the, the class that defines uh, uh, this, uh, the, that uh, run this, uh, this query, the, the target database, in this case is the default database. Uh, we can uh, see the value, the actual value of, of all the placeholder. Uh, we can swap the, the placeholder into the, the query so we can copy it uh, and run to the, that, mm, to the database. And if this query is a select, we can run an explain query to extract um, information from MySQL, in this case, uh, to, to understand how MySQL in, in analyze this query to uh, maybe implement better performance. We can also swap uh, 
uh, all the placeholder uh, in uh, uh, all the placeholder the placeholder of all the queries mm, because maybe we can we, we need to, to search a specific uh, strings string and uh, we can uh, show only the the slow query the slow queries for example uh, uh, the threshold was uh, five milliseconds, I, I think. Uh, so uh, the query that uh, is uh, slower than that is uh, where um, I glided here. We can change the, we can filter by the, the query time and the query type and, and so on. So we can uh, understand uh, how, um, what queries Drupal uses to, to build this, uh, this page. And the last step that uh, a, a, controller, a controller does, uh, does is uh, to uh, return a render array. Usually a uh, controller returns uh, a render array uh, with all the information uh, to build the main page content. Okay, only the, the area of the page that fits in the main, uh, main content region on the, on the page. Uh, and the rest of the page is usually built by the, the block system. On a, on a Drupal 8 uh, standard uh, uh, installation, uh, the, 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 um, the information uh, around the main page content are built by the, by the, block, uh, the block system. We uh, will see this uh, in, uh, la later. Okay, in, uh, in the case of uh, the uh, re recent, uh, um, recent message, the recent log messages, the, the render array is composed by a couple of uh, for, a couple of, um, of form and, and a table. Here we have uh, to form and, uh, and, then a, and then a table. Okay, uh, then we have a render array and we need to turn it uh, into a, an HTML page that uh, Drupal can return to the, to the browser. But um, if, we, if we follow the source code of Drupal 8, if we try to understand uh, where Drupal translated the render array into HTML, uh, it's very difficult to understand where, where it happens. And this is because a lot of system in, in Drupal 8 are loosely coupled and all the communication uh, between those systems happens through the event system, which is similar to the hook, hooks in Drupal 7, but not the same. And in this case, uh, if the controller, which is a typical use case in Drupal, if the controller returns uh, a render array and not uh, a response object, uh, the kernel uh, dispatches a kernel.view uh, event to look if someone uh, are able to translate this uh, render array into HTML, okay? Uh, so we, we need to, okay, this before. Uh, the event system works in this way. Uh, one or more listeners wait for a specific type of event, and if someone dispatches this type of event, every listener is invoked in order. Okay, and, this, uh, and all the listeners can interact with the event itself. So in this case, uh, there has to be a listener for the kernel.view example, which is capable of turning a main page content before in a complete page render array and then render it to uh, HTML. So we can use Web Profiler. For example, we can go to the home page on the event widget. Here we uh, can discover uh, every called uh, listeners, the, the class that implements uh, uh, the, the, the listener, and the priority of the listener. Um, all the uh, listeners that responds to the, to the same uh, event type 
are evaluated in uh, executed in uh, in order so we can look uh, uh, for a uh, kernel dot view event there are three of these but the one that draws our attention is the event uh, called the main content view subscriber and the responsibility of this uh, of this event is to uh, delegate to a page manager plugin uh, in Drupal 8 that knows uh, how to uh, decorate the main content uh, uh, render array with the the page the whole page uh, render uh, render array and main content view subscriber this uh, this uh, class which is a, a, a service looks for every service tagged with a specific tag in uh, in the service container this tag is uh, main underscore content underscore render we can uh, look for every service that uh, use this uh, which is tagged with the main content render okay there are some of them uh, that depends uh, of uh, this depends of uh, uh, the, the type of request we we have if we have an ajax request a dialogue request and so on uh, or an HTML request, uh, Drupal uses uh, uh, the, the, the correct one. In this case, uh, we are dealing with an HTML uh, page. So the renderer used is the HTML renderer. And this, uh, this renderer is uh, quite complex, but uh, uh, the, the specific things that uh, uh, it does is to uh, look for a specific uh, page, page variant plugin, uh, which is the, the component that decorated the main, uh, main, uh, page, con main page render array. In Drupal core, uh, there is only one implementation of this, uh, this plugin, which is the block page variant which uses the plugin defined in the plugin uh, configuration page uh, of Drupal 8 uh, and use it to uh, decorate the content uh, with the plugin, uh, the, the usual plugin, uh, plugin system. And we can use Web Profiler also to discover which uh, uh, blocks are used on, on this page. And uh, here we, we saw uh, we see uh, the um, plugin ID, the, plug the um, block ID, sorry, the um, block uh, label in which region uh, is, uh, is printed. If it's rendered, uh, rendered or, or not, uh, which module uh, provides this block, uh, which theme, uh, uh, the status, uh, and the plugin that implements this, uh, this block. Okay, so uh, we, we saw that. Okay, at the, at the end of this process, uh, main content view subscriber returns uh, the render array of the whole page. Uh, and the, the, the last things that uh, uh, HTML render uh, uh, does is to render the render array to a, uh, an HTML response. Uh, HTML response is a kind of symphony, a symphony response uh, object that contains the HTML of, a, um, of, this, uh, of this page. And the, the component in Drupal 8 that uh, translate the, do the, the final translation from render array to, to HTML is the theme layer of Drupal, of Drupal 8. Uh, and the, the, the team layer uses a twig uh, to fill all the temp templates with data from the, from the render array. And we can use Web Profiler also in this case to, to look at the team system. 
uh, and uh, here we can discover that uh, the, the, the team name, in this case, is Stalk, Talk. The engine is Twig. The, this is a sub-team of Bartik. Uh, the defined regions, uh, used libraries, uh, uh, style sheets removed from uh, other modules or teams. Uh, the path on the file system uh, of this uh, of this team and the class that uh, uh, choose that this is the active team in this uh, for for this page. Uh, then we this is useful for performance analysis. We we have the the total render time twig are compiled uh, in in PHP uh, before uh, the render process. Um, we have the number of uh, Twig file used, uh, and uh, the number of time uh, it, they are they are used to build this uh, this specific page, which is the the home page. And then we have a, a call graph of all the dependencies between every uh, Twig file. So you can use we can use uh, this uh, this call graph to to understand uh, which uh, Twig files were used and. Uh, which files depends on uh, other other files. Okay. And during the the render process, uh, all the JavaScript and CSS assets were uh, added to the final markup, and obviously we have a widget for that. Uh, in the assets uh, widget, we have a list of all the JavaScript files and uh, CSS files used on on this page. Uh, for the um, Drupal settings uh, uh, JavaScript asset, which is a par uh, particular uh, asset, um, we can uh, see all the JSON that uh, is injected in in the page. And for every for every file, we have the the, uh, the a path, uh, the version where the, uh, if the file uh, is. Um, Insert in the header of the footer of the page, and a lot of other information uh, uh, for every every specific uh, every specific file. For example, uh, if we have a, a JavaScript file that is used only uh, for a specific version of a specific browser, uh, we can see that this uh, JavaScript is used only if uh, we have uh, Internet Explorer lesser than eight, for example. And the same for CSS, uh, the, the same the same structure. So we can uh, discover how uh, those uh, assets uh, are used in every in every page. And uh, at the end of this process, uh, finally the kernel sends the response back to the response back to the to the browser. Uh, uh, our journey in say Drupal is finished. We are reached the the end of the render process and the the kernel returned the the response to the browser that rendered uh, the the html into uh, into a web page in a web page okay but there are, there are one more thing that i want to show you uh, we maybe we, we in in this presentation we will lack an, an overview of all the system uh, work uh, there is another um, widget in the in the web profiler, um, the timeline uh, the timeline wi the timeline widget uh, that uh, shows an overview of all the, the all, all the system, and it is built uh, in uh, using D3, which is a library to uh, draw uh, to do a drawing, and here. Um, we, we saw a, a timeline uh, um, of every and every component invo components involved in rendering of this uh, of this uh, page uh, are and are shown in this in this uh, timeline with the information about uh, uh, the time spent uh, for every component and the um, number of the, the the quantity of memory used uh, for each of them. The, the brown one uh, are the, the services instantiation. Then we were each the, okay, there are a lot of them. Okay, 
we, we reach the, um, the event, in this case, uh, uh, kernel uh, dot request event spends this time uh, this quantity of time and memory uh, the light uh, blue were the um, event listeners and then so in case of, in the case of Drupal uh, the most expensive uh, part of the uh, page rendering happens in the main content view subscriber the class we we saw uh, and then in, the, in, in yellow, we have the, 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 the Twig compilation. So the, 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 the biggest one is the HTML, uh, the HTML Twig, uh, Twig file, which contains all the, all the page. And we can, uh, we can use this timeline to, to have an overview of uh, every dependencies and uh, how the different components uh, uh, are invoked to, to, to go from the, the request to the, to, the, to, the, to the response. Okay. Okay, we've just scratched the surface uh, of the new Drupal 8 uh, because uh, during this, uh, this process, uh, Drupal can do a lot of other tasks. Uh, for example, sending email, contacting external systems, uh, building views, uh, and so on. And Web Profiler obviously has a widget for all of these of those things. We can collect every mail sent by a page, every uh, external uh, uh, HTTP request using Gazol. Uh, how many time uh, uh, Drupal spends building, rendering views, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, the API is uh, very extensible, so Contrib module can provide uh, can provide um, other widgets to Web Profiler. Uh, mm, for example, uh, rules uh, and them key are providing uh, um, their debugging information uh, on web profiler. And here we have some bibliography, the okay, web profiler uh, web page on Drupal 8. Uh, we have built an infographic to, to explain all of those things uh, graphically. Uh, and some other inf mm, useful link uh, to understand uh, other, other, other system. For example, the documentation uh, from symphony.com, which explain how the mm, debug uh, toolbar works in, uh, in Symfony, uh, and a link to the Drupal console project. And, okay, that's all. I remember you that uh, tomorrow, uh, there will be a sprint, and uh, probably uh, we can. I am here at the at the sprint tomorrow, so if any of you are interested in um, contribute to to Web Profiler, we can uh, meet uh, tomorrow and try to. Uh, there, there are. There, is a, there are a lot of things that we, we can add to the, to the module to uh, analyze uh, other parts of, uh, of Drupal. And uh, I also remember you that uh, next year Drupal Developer Days uh, will be in Italy in, at the end of June. So join us, uh, join us in Italy. And thank you. Okay, I think we have uh, five minutes, no? No? Okay. If we have um, some, some minutes for, for questions, if you have some questions, you can use the mic. And if you have uh, uh, any other question, I, I'm here today and tomorrow, so feel free to ask a uh, question when, when you want. Thanks for of all. Uh, first of all, thanks for this nice talk. I uh, wanted to ask if there is also some profiling on trick variables. So I have always sometimes sometimes a hard time finding the outcome or the origin of a trick variable. Okay. Uh, no, at the moment no, but uh, it is an interesting uh, argument. I never think about that. But uh, if you can 
post an issue to the web profiler issue queue, I can work on it uh, absolutely. Any other question? No? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>